In this video, we get to tour my favorite schoolie. Allie and Blake from Bliss Fisher Creative designed and built out their 2002 Ford E50 short schoolie named Gus the Bliss Bus and did such a great job with the layout. This bus features colorful pallet wood walls, a wood stove, a large shower, composting toilet, lots of storage, a comfortable lounge area, and an awesome bed that stores up on the ceiling. Hi, I'm Allie and this is Blake. And this is Gus the Bliss Bus. And together, all of us are at Bliss Fisher Creative. On Instagram, it's Bliss Fisher Creative. And our website is blissfisher.org. Come Let's on in. in. The back is all pallets. We have a dear friend whose house we built the bus in his driveway. And he worked at a brewery and had a bunch of pallets. So he brought those home for us. And we sanded them and painted them. We took off the paneling and took off all the rivets, which was insane to do. Don't ever do that if you can avoid it at all costs. Blake actually created this bed this whole bed comes all the way up. Okay, tally ho. We're right. ready for the bed yeah. to go up. Okay. Yeah, so here's the, the beds on a pulley system. You have four pulleys up here attached to four corners of the bed. And then one back up here at the front. And it's just a come along. It usually requires like a puller and a guider. And a two person piece. job. Okay, good. Okay. Then we put everything in the back. Bing, bang, boom! <laughs> Excellent. And then underneath all of these. We have lots of storage, so all of these come up. Oh wow! And during our <laughs> wedding, when we got married three years ago, before we hopped on the bus, we took the bus to our wedding, and this was our guest book. So every, under every one of these, we have Blake and Allie, and everybody signed it as a guest book. <laughs> so lots of books and art supplies down here some canvas and lots of camping supplies backpacking any kind of other stuff that we can be able to do uh. and it's kind of like garage area auto stuff mm -hmm. winter clothes right uh-huh uh-huh wow that is a lot of storage yeah it's nice yeah it's very key even though we got rid of a lot of stuff when we downsized it's still nice to be able to have the option of yeah. going backpacking, especially if one of us wants to go do like a solo trip. It's a 2002 Ford E450 turbo diesel. It's a 7.3 liter turbo diesel, which is great because it cooks up the mountains pretty good for the most part. Uh, do about 85 on the highway in Utah. Wow. Uh, it came straight well like one middleman away from uh the school district that was our ideal because the school districts always take such good care of their vehicles the entire time so we found exactly what we wanted we wanted the 7.3 we wanted everything about this bus this was the dream bus so we found it from a guy on craigslist and he had got it from auction uh at denver public schools and just didn't end up having the time to build it out so it still had all the seats in it. It had all the kid footprints and candy. You found a Batman, Batman watch. watch. That was good. Lots of gum. <laughs> Lots of gum. Lots of gum, I was gonna ask. <laughs> and we're doing the pillow shuffle. We're gonna put the bed down. Shuffle that every nomad has one. <laughs> Probably has multiple shuffles. Uh -huh. Perfection. Right. 
Down she goes. <laughs> Over in this corner, we have our little wood burning stove. It takes wood, pallets. You have to have very tiny pieces. Oh, cue the dog. Come here. This is Cliff. He is part of Bliss Fisher Creative. He was being a troublemaker somewhere on the tiny house fest. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> yep, that's our wood stove. It burns amazing and keeps things really hot. Uh, you just got to feed it a lot. So keeps us warm. We go to bed snuggle. It works So this is one of my favorite parts of the bus that Blake built for me specifically I have essential oils coming out of my ears And so he built a whole shelf for me and I didn't bring all of them to the show Because I love them so dearly. So usually this whole thing is stacked full of oils So it's easy to turn around, bam, I want this, I'm using this, put it in the diffuser so it's easy access and not anything's gonna fall while we're driving, which is the most important part. This area is where we have some bathroom stuff that goes too deep and then lots of, it's like a pantry, essentially. Uh, this used to come out, but after many a bus fails of a whole shelf coming out and flying while you're driving, it now stays stationary and is stuck in place. Uh, this is Blake's closet area. That still folds out completely. Lots of room. Mine is the same down here. Lots of storage under here as and well. Do those tiny locks, are they enough to keep? They are enough. They okay. are enough. There's, it's, um, after seeing some other locks around here, they are way more lovely, but these work. Um, it holds it just enough and then right here we do a bungee cord when we're driving in order to keep our stove That sits here and anything else from flying out this way because that has also happened Lots of learning of the things that fly out when you're driving So yeah, that kind of leads us to over here our fridge. It could be a fridge or a freezer. Our fridge is a winter 45 it's incredibly energy efficient as we are completely on solar mm -hmm. so it doesn't pull a lot from our battery. For solar we have two 250 watt panels on the roof um, so that's 500 watts total and two 6 volt Trojan T105 golf cart batteries mm -hmm. uh, with room to put two more in if we really want. So far uh, that's been enough and we run our little 12 volt refrigerator, run some lights, we want to run our water pump, and we charge our phones. Uh, we don't have an inverter, so we don't, uh, everything's DC. For three years it's worked really great and given us everything we need to, to keep going on the road. We have computers and since we work on the road, like, we would charge them when the bus is driving. Right, so just a little plug-in DC inverter and charge on yeah, the Yeah, into the bus. So that was perfect. That charges the engine, doesn't draw from our battery. Start simple because you Smart. we knew that we could go bigger. Mm -hmm. There's space to go bigger. Right. Yeah. Going on towards our kitchen area, this is our stove that we decided <laughs> instead of making a stationary place where we would actually in install a stove top or anything, just to do a camp stove. We mm -hmm. read a lot of reviews that said this was incredible, especially for daily continual use. And we've had it for three years and just cleaned some things in there and allowed it to work even better. Nice. So that gets stowed away when we're driving down in that area or when we're not cooking and we can still have this big amount of counter space. We have a 45 gallon freshwater tank down here, okay. inlets on the outside. This is for dishes and pots and pans. As you can see, they are bungeed. We found out another hard way of how those can just bust through while you're driving, and we had a whole door break off one time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the adventure. The adventure. It's always lots of learning in the beginning of the adventure, specifically. Mm -hmm. This is our tiny little bar sink. 
Uh, however, it is mighty. Gets great water pressure. Woo! <laughs> This is a filtered water system. It is a three-stage filtration system by Apex that allows us to, so they say we could put in like river water, some pretty clean river water, and it would go through all stages and be potable. Our gray water tank uh, goes, the plumbing goes under the bus. Our gray water tank, that leads us to our shower. In here is our little shower and our gray water tank is underneath. And that's about a 30 gallon tank. And we decided to do a shower just in case we would be doing seasonal jobs or be in the city or somewhere where we weren't gonna be showered or we couldn't do a shower bag outside. So we would attach a shower bag right here, heat it up outside all day, attach it here. And we have a little shower curtain that we put right here. So it keeps everything else dry and all of this is able to get wet. So we don't use it often as a shower anymore. Usually it's now just a closet. So, or when we go kayaking, it's able to hold all of our wet stuff, throw the seats, throw the whole kayak, bathing suits. We have a composting toilet and it is bucket to burial <laughs> or to bag, depending on where we're at. Uh, we use a mix of peat moss and sawdust, primarily sawdust now. And there is a urine diverter in there that allows everything to be kept separate. And then it's just disposing of it out in the wilderness, which we usually are. a lot of YouTube videos we did a lot of research on uh, schoolie.net um, and then once we got all the bus seats torn out we sort of taped the floor and decided you know where we wanted stuff just kind of visualized um, and then a lot of it was just making it up along the way which is kind of how we do life priorities it was like what are our priorities and where can you give a little bit of space and you know we're like tiny bathroom that works but a shower seems smart um lots of compromises lots of compromises but this i think was the best idea that a lot that allowed things to merge because we're like well we want people to hang out in here but we don't want a traditional what we saw in some RVs or places where it was like a seating area with like a table. So we have a table that we can bring out, fold out and put right here for cards, for pancakes. It took us nine months during which we also designed and planned our wedding. Uh, so we took you know, a, a, a month off during that process because we were totally overwhelmed. Um, and we built it all in our friend's driveway in Arvada. We still worked uh, in Denver. We're still working during that process. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a lot of work. It was a lot more work than we expected. Uh, mm -hmm. We got it done with a little help from our friends and, and a lot of learning along the way. We set out um, three years ago for full time and we're just planning on gonna find jobs, like work seasonally in places, mm -hmm. uh, which we did. And we ended up back in Denver we were trying to still travel in somewhere warm for the winter, but we ended up back in Denver to work for the season, Christmas season. Uh, and then we had a Moab, so it's, we've been full time and in the bus, and sometimes we stop in a city to work, which requires us to maybe crash in a, a place for like a month or two. We've been building a business along the way, and so, you know, ideally we'd like to be doing that full time, but sometimes that doesn't work out and you have to readjust and, um, and figure it out. So sometimes it's getting a seasonal job or a part-time job or doing odds and ends mm -hmm. here or there uh, to make it all work. 
but mm -hmm. um, that's the bottom line is that we make it work as we go along and we do what we need to and so uh, mm -hmm. the thing that we found like the best tool and what we've ended up making a business out of is um, learning to connect and relate to mm -hmm. people and different personalities um, starting with our own uh, you know learning how we work and how we hold ourselves up and and where we get caught up and how to problem solve together and, and how to communicate with mm, <laughs> totally different people you know has been a uh, our saving grace really mm. we've had some of the most amazing opportunities working with people that are very difficult to work with <laughs> some big personalities some big personalities to navigate yeah, yeah. dance with <laughs> it's all a dance <laughs> yeah but it's all really lovely mm -hmm. yeah. mm. that's what we try to do is help other people navigate that the name of our program that we've got online right now is called know your weirdo and it's a 12-week program about uh, learning about the nine different personality types of the Enneagram, which is a personality system and a tool for spiritual and personal growth. What do you love? About living in a schoolie? Yeah. Oh, the outside inside. Um, the huge backyard space that you have is incredible. The dual outdoor living that's so possible and I would say my favorite that I don't ever want to live without again is all these windows. It is so incredible to have so much light and so much view. Our favorite place is to park specifically in Utah where there's like 360 views. You have all of these up that you can even tuck them up and you just, you're sitting in a painting. That's probably my favorite part of living in a schoolie. Yeah. I like the fact that we can move it. <laughs> it doesn't get moved very often these days, but that's uh, my favorite part is driving. Yeah. Mm. I love to drive and just go explore different places. So. And it can get a lot of places. It being a little shorty, Yeah. it can fit in parking spots and oh. it has the clearance to where you have taken it to some pretty interesting places. Yeah. <laughs> you drive it like a cowboy and I'm appreciative of that. Yeah. We've seen some incredible places <laughs> due to your courage <laughs> and skill. Um, what would you change? What would you change? I mean, it would be additions because I love our setup. Um, I would add some kind of table that we could uh, put up next to, like pop up to have more room for the kitchen. So just something that we could pop up with wood. Um, mm -hmm. I would add probably a tow hitch to tow a car that we just inherited um it really adds a lot of autonomy to be able to have another vehicle would you change anything i would like a roof deck i think that'd be cool so another addition yeah so just more building is coming yeah <laughs> change what would i change i'd like a little more craftsmanship we kind of built it in a hurry and wanted to get on the road and mm -hmm. now we're in another project and i'd <laughs> love the time to like really um yeah, add some detail and finish some things up that have mm -hmm. uh, just been kind of rushed through. So I think that's the main thing for me is mm. I just like to give it a little more love. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you nailed your layout. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really feel like we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel it flows really good well. about it. it flows well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. I want to thank Ellie and Blake for sharing their awesome bus with us. They did a great job turning a small space into a large living area. If you love this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other videos to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I appreciate your thoughtful comments. And if you'd like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey. Mm -hmm.